Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a few different styles, but it has been about two years or so since I last reviewed something from these guys. So the one that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I've not had from them before, but this beer is supposed to be pretty nice actually, and it's also a style that I very much enjoy so quite curious to see how this one turns out and it's also a kind of special occasion beer for this brewery as well so hopefully this one's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so uh, yeah for this review then we are going to go to Neuschöping which is a little bit to the south of Stockholm and we're going to have a look at another beer from Nils Oscar Brewery or Nils Oscar Brewery I'm never sure exactly how to refer Fair to these guys. But this particular beer is the Shugi Femme or Jubileums Ul, basically the 25th anniversary beer. It is a barley wine coming in at 10.4% ABV, and this one was released as part of the Tilfelig Temporary Sortiment through Systembolaget here in Sweden in February of 2022. So uh, yeah, this should be quite nice actually. The last beer that I had from Nils Oscar was a Rauch beer, if I remember rightly, and next month we will actually be reviewing the Scotch Ale as well, which I'm very curious about. So uh, yeah, nice to return to these guys after what seems like quite a long time. As I say, I think it's about two and a bit years since we last reviewed something from them. And to return to them for their 25th anniversary beer, I think is a little bit special. So let's crack on with this one then and see how we get on. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Nils Oscar Brewery before, and we will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Nils Oscar Brewery then. So the Nils Oscar Brewery, Nils Oscar Brewery, was originally founded back in 1996, but the brewery was based originally in Kungsholm in Stockholm, and at this time it had the name Kungsholmens Kvarta Brewery. A little bit later on, in 1998, Carl David Sundberg, who is well known in the steel industry, took control of the company, and it was this point that the beer was rebranded with the name Nils Oscar. But by 2006, they'd outgrown their brewery in Kungsholmen, and so they moved to Ternum manor at Frenschellen in New Shipping, which is a bit to the south of Stockholm. And when they've been, well, they were based in there, I think they are still based in there, uh, they were also producing their own malts there for a period of time as well and distilling different alcohols too. But the brand Niels Oscar is actually based on Carl's grandfather, Niels Oscar Sundberg, who was from a village called Brandon in the Norrbotten region of Sweden. And this area, of course, has a lot of timber and mining activities, but there was a tough economic period in the late 1800s which hit the area hard. And so in 1882, at the age of 17, Niels Oscar received a ticket from America from an emigrant relative who owned a farm over there. So he crossed the Atlantic, he worked there for 18 years, initially working in a kitchen, but doing lots of different things. During his time in the US though, he caught typhus, and he also studied business English at the Bryant and Stratton Business College in Chicago, the principal of whom thought very highly of Neil's work ethic and honesty. But in 1900, Niels returned to Sweden and married his wife, Ida, eventually having four sons together, and they established the family farm at Brendan, which is where the Tarnu Manor is and the Niels Oscar Brewery and Distillery is currently located. But when forming the brewery, Carl David Sunbury was really inspired by the stories of Niels Oscar as relative 
that um, had been brought back from the USA and he just felt that it was really natural to name his beer brand after uh, after him. So that's how you got Neil's Oscar out of this. Um, but over the following years, uh, or over the years, these guys have continued to expand their operations and get their beers out there a little bit more. But since 2020, the brewery has been under new ownership and a group known as the Sermlands Nested took over the ownership of the company. So Rolf Liedal is now the chairman, whereas uh, Henrik Kielberg is the CEO. So uh, yeah, they've just been putting out lots of different beers over the last little while. And as of March 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced over 30 different kinds of beer. But uh, yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Neil's Oscar Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all those different beers that they've done. So uh, yeah, that's it for your history section of this video. Let's crack on and have a little look at the beer itself. So as you can see, this one has come in a 330 milliliter bottle. And as I said earlier, it was released as part of the Tilfelig temporary sortiment through System Bolaga in February of 2022. There you can see the Neil's Oscar bottle cap there. I'm not sure how if the camera's going to focus on that because it is quite shiny. I see the camera doesn't like this bottle very much. The camera, of course, doesn't like it when there's uh, shiny things on it. But like we said, this one is called the uh, Shugi Fem Oz Jubileum Barley Wine. It comes in at 10.4% ABV and it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back here. So it says uh, Neil's Oscar is celebrating 25 years and uh, we're celebrating it with this uh, Jubilee, this anniversary uh, with a barley wine in the American style. Uh, with 25 years experience, we have created this beer with, um, how do we say, with the view of 25 new years, I think it's saying. But a beer that um, has taken a long time to age and a beer that can uh, be used to celebrate. That's kind of what they're saying. So basically it's the kind of beer that they've, they've designed with their experience in mind. And it's one that you can use to celebrate or you can age it for a period of time if you want to. But uh, yeah, looks pretty good, I have to say. So lovely, really nicely presented. This one there you can see the picture of Neil's Oscar on the bottle. And uh, yeah, I think we can crack this one open and see how we get on. If memory serves me correctly, I think I paid about 50 Swedish kroner for this. So that translates to roughly five euros, uh, somewhere in the region of four pounds sterling. And I guess in the region of about $6 American for those of you watching in different parts of the world. But uh, yeah, definitely cool to return to these guys for their 25th anniversary beer. And I do enjoy a good barley wine. And that was one of the main motivations behind buying this one. So when we open this beer up, there is a little bit of smoke coming out of the bottle there, which looks very, very nice. But let's get this guy out and into the glass and we'll see how we go. So, yeah. I can't remember the last barley wine I had actually, but it wasn't too long ago. There's quite a few breweries at the moment making uh, barley wines, which is cool to see because it's a style that was kind of neglected for a wee while. But the, the whole, all the different styles go in kind of peaks and troughs. You get loads of them for a while, then you don't get any of them, then everybody starts making them again. That's just kind of how it goes. So before the head disappears on this beer, you can see that it poured with about a quarter finger of a light frothy, I would say slightly fawn coloured head. There's a nice kind of ring around the edge of the glass there. That is lingering there. But as you would expect with a beer that is so high in alcohol, you know, 10.4%, that head has kind of dissipated uh, quite quickly. We've just got a few little kind of wispy bits on the top of that and the nice kind of ring around the edge of the glass there. But uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Um, this one is crystal clear, incidentally. Just let you guys see that. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera because we are filming in the evening, of course, when it's dark. But um, yeah, in terms of colour, this beer has a lovely, very dark ruby red to it. It's not actually far away from this red that you can see on the bottle here. But uh, yeah, crystal clear, so it's obviously been filtered, of course, but it looks absolutely great. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Um, so that's always one thing to uh, to consider as well. But uh, yeah, any barrel agent that you do or any adjuncts that you put in can affect the colour of the beer too. That can be the case in terms of barley wines. But uh, yeah, I don't think in this one. This one, as far as I know, has not been barrel aged 
or anything like that. But it certainly looks the part. You will get barley wines that are nice and red like this. You will get some of them that look a little bit more kind of chestnutty and mahogany. But this one has a lovely kind of quite bright rubyish red tint to it. So yeah, looks very, very nice this one. Other than that, I don't think there's anything we really need to say about the appearance of this beer. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I can get, I've had a nice little whiff of it already, but let's look at this. Ooh, yeah, that is very, very nice actually. Um, yeah, so the aroma out of this beer, it's kind of interesting because it's actually, it smells like a big kind of, it smells like a big boozy beast to be honest with you. Um, so the main difference for me between an English barley wine, of course these are the original ones, and the American barley wine, I would say that the, the English barley wines tend to be a bit more bready, they've got a bit more of a kind of bread crusty, uh, they do have a little bit more of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing to them, the brown sugars are a little bit more kind of leathery and stuff like this, and you do get a little bit of a kind of phenolic fruit out of it, whereas the American ones it's a bit more of a kind of straight up sweet caramel, there's a sweet oily red fruit to them as well, you've got lots of different things uh, coming out of that, but um, yeah, the aroma that comes out of this one I think is pretty nice actually it smells like quite an old school American barley wine like some of the first ones that I ever reviewed on the channel way back in 2013 that's crazy how long ago that is now um but yeah aroma wise this one is um this one is very very nice so backboard of this beer then let's have a little look at this we'll try and break down the aroma for you a wee bit more so the backbone of the beer, you certainly do get a little touch of bread crust out of it, and there is a wee bit of a brown bready sort of thing, but I'm getting quite a bit of a woody character out of it. Definitely one or two little nutty elements as well. Um, so yeah, bread crust, a little bit of a kind of brown bready sort of thing, some woody and nutty characters, um, and yeah, it does go together really, really quite well. Um, yeah. The way that it goes together is quite nice. There's a lot of brown sugar to this one. So I will say, in fairness, you do get a little tiny touch of the more kind of leathery brown sugar. And one of the things you have to remember with barley wines is quite often these beers will have quite a long wort boil. I mean, the standard wort boil tends to be about 90 minutes. Um, but with barley wines and imperial stouts and stuff like that, they do quite often extend it out a little bit. And you get this kind of leathery smoothness to the, um, the brown sugar as well. You can smell a little bit of that in this one, but overall, I do actually get a good little, I get a little touch of like a kind of darker treacly molasses note out of this one, but at the same time, there's some really bright caramelly notes in there. Yeah, there's some really nice bright caramelly notes in there. A little bit of a more kind of biscuity sort of thing. And um, yeah, I do like, uh, you know, I really do like how that always, uh, how that goes together. So aroma wise, I think it's, um, you know, aroma-wise, it is pretty damn nice in that sense. The brown sugary notes for me are very good, but this, to me, in terms of what I'm getting from the aroma, it strikes me as a very kind of old-school uh, barley wine. But yeah, a little bit of bread crust, brown bread, some kind of, a little bit of that leathery brown sugar in there, of course, some woody and nutty undertones as well. Um, sweet caramel, a little bit of biscuit, it's got kind of everything that you would want. You do start to get a little touch of cakiness out of this one as well, it has got a wee bit of that kind of fruity, cakey sort of thing as well. Um, yeah, it has got a little bit of that sort of fruity, cakey sort of thing, a little bit of that kind of fruit, you know, that kind of fruit bread actually, it's got a little bit of that kind of vibe to it, and it's quite interesting. The more that you smell it, of course, I think it gets a little bit more sort of woody, it gets a little bit more kind of woody and everything like that. So, um, yeah, aroma-wise, this beer is very nice. I do get a little bit of yeastiness out of this one, of course, as well. You can smell that with some of the bready notes that it, that it gives you. Um, so, yeah, the way that that goes together is very, very nice. In terms of the hoppy side of things, um, this beer for me, um, I would say... The hoppiness is quite interesting. Um, it's quite smooth actually. You get a little bit of smooth earthiness out of it. There's a wee touch of herbal character there and a little bit of kind of floral aromaticity. If I was guessing with this, you know, I would actually guess that this had something along the lines of um, Northern Brewer from Germany, which is a very popular hop to use in Doppelbox, or perhaps um, Bramling's Cross from England. I will be honest and say the hops that come out of this one don't strike me as being 
American, which is kind of interesting. And it's the little herbal character and the smoothness you get out of them that, that gives me that impression. Uh, there is a little bit of a lighter grassiness in there as well. But um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things, it's interesting. But like I say, you know, um, we're talking about, if we're talking about getting red fruit out of beers, there's quite a few different hops you can you can use. I mean, when it comes to the American barley wines, they would always use, you know, a bit of Cascade, a little bit of Chinook and stuff like this. There are other hops you can use in there, of course, as well. Will You Met, I remember, was one that was uh, was quite interesting. But yeah, in Europe, um, you know, the German Doppelbox will use, bar will use uh, the Northern Brewer and the English barley wines will use Bramling's Cross. And there's just something about this beer that makes me think it's a European hop that's in this rather than a, an American one. I could be wrong, but there is just something about it that's making me think that. Um, yeah, because the fruits, it could be a combination of the, the two actually. The fruity side of this beer is quite interesting, but like I say, the green component to this one is very smooth, and obviously the barley wine is a beer that you're going to age a little bit. I don't know how old this one actually is, um, but um, yeah, it says it's best before the 14th of the 10th, 2027, so I'm not sure when exactly this beer would have been brewed, if they've had it in the, the brewery for a little while, they've sat and aged it, um, but yeah, you know, I've no idea. It doesn't say when it would be when it's bottled. And to be honest, I think with beers that are, you know, imperial stouts and stuff like this, that's what you want. You want a bottled on date rather than a best before. I think, but um, yeah, you have to be careful with that actually with these ones. But with a barley wine, it's going to last for at least ten years or and beyond that, of course. But yeah, aroma wise, this one, I think is um is really nice. Um, the fruity side of things then, we've talked about the hoppy side of the beer, but let's look at the fruity side of things. For me, it does have a wee touch of a sharper raisin to it, but I'm getting a lot of kind of fig and a little bit of that kind of dainty, pruny sort of thing. It does have a little bit of that dried fruity character. The fruity notes are a little bit more akin to an English barley wine, I would say, rather than the big round things you get from the, uh, the American ones, the big oily fruity characters. So yeah, a little bit of a kind of, um, definitely a wee bit of a sort of round of a kind of more dry fruity character there's a wee bit of raisin a bit of a figgy note to it some kind of raisiny some kind of figgy um as i say yeah a little bit of a kind of figgy um datey sort of note to it as well prune now nah, prunes i think rather not really dates but then you've also got a wee touch of a kind of black currenty note as well i don't get so much of an oily blackberry out of it but um yeah aroma wise this one is um is pretty nice actually. I really like how this um how this goes together. It's going to be an interesting beer, this for sure. But definitely some English elements in it, although they're saying it is an American style barley wine. But I suspect European hops in this. I really do. So uh, yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time to ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we try this one then. So yeah, this one is the Niels Oscar Brewery. Uh, Shugi Femos Jubileums Ul, Barley Wine or Jubileums Barley Wine, whatever we want to call it. Uh, an American style barley wine coming in at 10.4% ABV. Happy 25th anniversary to Neil's Oscar, of course, but let's get stuck in and have a taste of this beer. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, first impression is, it's a really kind of, it's actually very smooth and quite slick. Um, it really is a nice kind of big smooth and slick uh, barley wine, this one actually. It's got everything you'd want from the style. And it's actually one of these ones where everything just fits together. There's not one element of it kind of sticks out too much, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, this is quite a nice straight shooting beer actually, so thumbs up. The Neil's Oscar. I'm curious to see what their Scotch is going to be like as well, because it's a bit higher in alcohol too. Um, so, yeah, um, I mean, aroma-wise, flavour-wise, brain is not working today, guys. It's really bad. Um, flavour-wise, this beer... This beer, I think, is is it's really growing on me actually. But as I say, it's it's got a lovely smoothness and kind of silkiness to it. Uh, yeah. So.
So, um, so straight away with this beer, we'll, we'll focus on the middle third of the palate as we always do. Um, straight away with this beer, you can feel a little bit of that kind of bread crusty base. There's a wee bit of a kind of smooth, there's a wee bit of a kind of smooth brown bready character in there as well, which I can certainly appreciate. And um, yeah, that's the backbone of it. But if you move toward the front of that middle third of the palate, you get a little bit of a kind of nutty and woody character coming out of it. So yeah, I do like how, uh, I really do like how that um, how that goes together in this one. It, it is quite an old school barley wine in some ways. And it, it does, the thing that I like about this is it shows you an element of the old school kind of English barley wine type thing, but it does give you some of the kind of sweetness and fruitiness of the American one. So yeah, this beer kind of, it kind of straddles the line, if you like, between the, the two different variants of barley wine, but it gets a thumbs up from me. So, um, be, as I say, middle third of the palate then, you get a little bit of that kind of, um, you do get a little bit of that nice kind of bread crusty backbone. On top of that, there's a wee bit of brown bread. But as I say, toward the front of that middle third of the palate, there's a little bit of a woody kind of nutty sort of thing in there as well. So I do um, I do quite like that about this one. Uh, on top of the, um, the kind of bready notes to the beer, that's when you start to get the brown sugar. So you can feel there is a little bit of a kind of toasty brown sugary note to this one, and that forms the backbone of it. But then there's a little circle, there's a circle in the middle of the palate there, and you get that smooth kind of leathery brown sugary note out of the beer, which I can I can appreciate as well. So that goes together pretty well, I have to say. Yeah. Um, the way that this one... Um, the way that the, the kind of leathery notes come out of this, you can tell, I don't, I think it's had a slightly longer wort boil than the standard 90 minutes, but not too much, if that makes sense. It's not the kind of stickiest and oiliest of barley wines. So I think it might have had, it, it has had a wee bit longer than the 90 minutes, but um, not too much longer. I think maybe three hours or something like that, I'd be guessing there. But yeah, it has had a wee bit of that. So yeah, definitely you get a bit of the kind of roasty, toasty brown sugar, then you get that kind of circle of more leathery brown sugar. In the dead center of the palate, you've got a little circle there, which is a kind of oily, caramelly note. So I really do like how that goes together. And then as you move out from the center of your palate, you get a little bit of a more kind of McBitties digestive biscuit sort of thing. So again, I really like how that, I do really like how that goes together in this, uh, in this beer. Um, yeah, but as I say, flavor wise, this one is, um, flavor-wise, this one is, is pretty nice on the malty side of things. It doesn't do anything overly surprising, but I just think it works really well. And you have got this kind of woody, nutty sort of thing to it as well, which I uh, which I can really appreciate. So it gets a thumbs up from me, absolutely. Um, let's focus on the, uh, the back third of the palette. I think we've said everything we need to about the middle third of the palette. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of bready build up in there. The base of the back third of the palate, you can feel there is a bit of a bread crust, you know, some brown bread as well, and they are a little bit more kind of grainy and things like that. Then on top of that, there's a more kind of dense brown bready sort of yeasty character to this one. And you can feel that again, that it just goes together very well. So the flavor, it's quite straightforward, as I say, it's just a more dense brown bready character with a wee bit more dryness to it in the back third of the palate for sure. So yeah, the way that that goes together is pretty damn nice. Uh, so yeah, back third of the palate, you can feel the flavor is definitely a little bit taller. So as you come kind of further forward, you can feel that nice, uh, the, the flavor is a little bit taller, but then as you move into the middle third of the palate, it just condenses down a little bit more and squashes together. Now, I do like that element to these, um, to these barley wines. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the malty. Or, uh, or yeasty side of the beer. But uh, yeah, the um, hoppy side of things in this one is kind of interesting as well. So as I was picking up in the aroma, the hoppy side of this beer is actually 
pretty smooth to be honest with you. In the back corners of the palette there's a nice little bit of uh, earthiness in there but as you move further forward it gets a little bit more herbal and as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palette it does develop a little bit of a more kind of floral aromatic sort of thing. Now either that is because some of the hops have kind of dropped out of the beer which is possible um, but then round the front curve of the palette it's a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy of course as well which I, I can certainly appreciate. So yeah, um, the um, yeah the the um, hop the green component of this beer is quite nice. I think it leans more towards the grassy side of things, to be honest with you. But there is something telling me that it is more that it's more um, either English or German hops that's in this. I'm I'm still I'm still thinking it could be Bramling's Cross or um, Bramling's Cross from England. Or German Northern Brewer that's in here. I really wouldn't be surprised at, um, at either of those. But uh, yeah, the green component's quite nice. But let's focus on the front third of the palate then and the fruity component of the beer. This one isn't a very high bitterness, um, a very high bitterness uh, barley wine. But then again, it's not the most hop forward of styles, even though the barley wine is kind of the big brother to the double IPA. Remember, paleo, IPA, double IPA, and barley wine, they're all related through their kind of malt to hops ratio. So keep that in mind. But yeah, let's focus on the fruity part of the beer then. So um, yeah, border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a bready build up in there again, a wee bit of bread crust and the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit of a kind of more smooth, um, it is a little bit of a more kind of smooth brown bready sort of thing as well. So, um, yeah. A fruity part of the beer then. It does have some of that kind of dried fruity element you'd expect of an English barley wine, but at the back of that front third of your palate on top, there is a wee bit of a sharp raisiny note, but under that, you do get a lot of that kind of dried pruny kind of character, and then the more kind of oily figgy note, and then as you move further forward, you start to get a little bit of a kind of dried black currant, but then a wee bit of an oily black berry on the front tip of the tongue too. So um, yeah, there's a few interesting things going on with this one, uh, definitely. It's an interesting beer, actually, in the way that it goes about its business. But for me, the fruity character is definitely more English than American. But um, I like it. I do like this beer. It's a nice, sippable barley wine, should we say. Uh, yeah, but definitely showing a mix of American and English character. It really does straddle the line between the two. Because it's not, for me, it's not quite as sweet as some of the uh, the American barley wines that I've had. But uh, yeah, that's all relative, of course. Remember, beer is very subjective. Different people see different things in it, of course. But I like this one. I do like it. But let's uh, leave it at that for the flavour and round off the review with a look at the mouthfeel. So for me, I think this is kind of bottom end of full bodied. Yeah, bottom end of full bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. It's got a little bit of a slick, kind of silky oiliness to it, which I think is great. There's a smooth, um, yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of smooth, um, it's a bit, so there's just a little bit of that smoothness to it as well. But in terms of IBUs, I don't find this one overly bitter. I think it's about 30 to 40 IBUs at maximum, but it does get a wee bit more bitter the further into the aftertaste you go. The malt base has a bit of smooth graininess underneath. There's a bit of sweetness in there as well. And you've also got that big juicy, oily, fruity character as well. So uh, yeah, the way that everything, Kind of pieces together in this beer, I think, is uh, is very nice. It's a very nice barley wine that shows you a mix of English and American character. So yeah, I think we can round off there. This is quite a nice beer for the twenty fifth anniversary from uh, from Neil's Oscar. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Neil's Oscar Brewery as well. And we will be returning to these guys fairly soon for a look at their Scotch Ale. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let me know your own thoughts. As I say, check out my social media. Check out those Oscar social media. But this one was the 25th anniversary barley wine at 10.4% ABV from Neil's Oscar Brewery. And it now shipping to the south of Stockholm. Slange it, skull, cheers, and see you guys on the next review.